Meet our first speaker, Florian, Florian Gremlich, Director Product and Managing Director at Oilex Group. Her talk, What COVID-19 Help Us Learn About Leadership. Hi, Florian, and welcome. Hello. Good morning. And Good morning. Where are you joining us from today? Berlin. Uh, Berlin. Berlin. How's the weather in Berlin? I see you are dressed light. Is it warm? It will be 30 degrees. Uh, and an excellent weekend, so kind of uh, awesome. really nice. Awesome. Very glad to he have you with us. And um, I will leave the stage to you. And we will keep an eye on the chat also at on our live chat and see if there are some questions. And I see people already asking <laughs> other openings for data science, uh, interns for front end developers. Florian will answer, uh, answer that questions. And I will leave the stage to you. Try to share your slides if you have any and see if they're working. Yes. Good All morning right. from Dublin. Can you see my screen? The typical question during these times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not yet. Try again. Are you, pre are you clicking on this button where the screen is visible? I am. All right. Yes, yes, it's happening. Excellent. Awesome. We can see your slides. You can also, okay, you enable it. Perfect. Yes. Thank you very much and enjoy. Thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for having me. Um, kind of, this is an info session around OLX, and I'll talk a little bit about OLX, about um, opportunities uh, within OLX, uh, but also kind of sharing a little bit how we work. And I actually group this around leadership uh, and leadership focusing uh, actually on, on, on women. Um, and as Anna said, I'm, I'm a product director at OLX and I'm actually looking after trust and safety, uh, but also monetization. I'm also the managing director for the Berlin Hub. It's a product and tech hub in Berlin with around 300 people and also talk about this in a little bit. First of all, what is OLX? And OLX Group uh, is a part of Posos, most likely a company you've never heard of. Posos is a relatively new company. It's a spin-off uh, from, from Nespas. Um, also maybe a company I haven't heard of before, which is a South African a media conglomerate. And basically Posos is an investor, um, but also kind of is a um, collection of, of uh, different companies that are completely own, owning PayU, uh, but also OLX Group and have investments in Tencent or also Delivery Hero, to name a few. I'm not boring you with numbers, uh, but uh, for a company you've never, most likely never heard of, it's like, it's a huge one uh, in terms of revenues and also footprint. Um, as you can see here, it's like available in many of the, the countries of the world, um, from, from Russia to Latin America, South Africa, um, not that much in Europe. We're actually also kind of, uh, apart from, um, uh, from Delivery Hero, are not active in, in Germany, despite um, having uh, its OLX a hub in, in Berlin. Just shortly, because... Uh, uh, I think it's impressive that, uh, that Naspers slash Prozis is quite an old company. It's already over 100 years old. Um, and again, South African uh, media conglomerate and is uh, still um, one of the uh, Africa's leading media groups. Um, something I was always proud of because um, I also worked at eBay and PayPal uh, before. Um, and uh, eBay and PayPal then the more easier markets, uh, whereas uh, Nespers decided to tackle the more complicated ones, which are the emerging markets um, or Eastern Eastern Europe. Um, and uh, that's something I'm quite proud of. Talking about Olix, um, Olix is a classifieds business, um, basically a hands off business uh, where uh, person to person trade happens. Uh, users are uh, kind of uh, putting in a um, item or a job offer or their car uh, and then find uh, their prospective buyers on the platform. Um, there are a few players uh, which are operating the same uh, stage. It's uh, Shipstead uh, to name one, uh, but also um, uh, Facebook and eBay uh, with eBay classifieds that you um, might know here. S small video. Um, just and actually, it's, I think it shows quite nicely uh, who we are and uh, how we are working. Oh.
Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And actually, it's really kind of how we are uh, as, a, as a company and kind of many things and many scenes kind of make me smile because I was part of it. Um, so I uh, hope you do enjoy this too. Um, when it comes to OLX Group, we are a global uh, product and tech group uh, with 20 brands, uh, over 15 time zones with over 5,000 people working for OLX Group. Um, and uh, basically, we are our ambition is, is to, to be the market leading trading platform. Uh, we already have over 300 million people on the platform each month to upgrade their lives. Uh, some of the brands that are part of OLX Group, it's OLX as a brand, uh, but also kind of let go, Avito, Dubizel, we also have uh, verticals, both in cars and uh, real estate, uh, but also other verticals uh, like Trado, Celency, and so on and so forth. We're also going into the offline transaction market. If, you, if you're sitting in India, you might know Cash My Car, uh, where basically you can cash your car um, uh, on OLX uh, for, for, for money. Uh, vision, um, we talked about it, uh, it's empowering people to upgrade their lives um, to, and where our ambition is to actually get to 1 billion people. If you're looking at India or Indonesia, like uh, super boosting markets um, where people can exchange goods and services uh, through products and uh, um, services customer love. Um, through an ecosystem of services, and that also gives you a little bit of a flavor of what we're actually working on in terms of product. One is obvious, easy and liquid. If you don't have liquidity on the market, it's quite difficult to actually get, get users on the, on the platform. It needs to be smart and personalized. There were questions around data science. So machine learning and AI is a priority for us, um, that it is safe and trustworthy. Um, safety is always a thing when it comes to classifieds and marketplaces. Uh, kind of it already kind of kept me busy at eBay before, but uh, that's still, let's still do. Uh, and uh, being, being convenient. Ultimately, kind of customers want to have it easy, and that's always a priority. Our values, um, and all of them, are quite um, are quite important, I think. And it's uh, working back from the customer. Um, we need to be customer centric. Uh, we, we, obviously, like every company, we are sometimes struggling with this kind of because there are priorities and kind of. Uh, Things that are challenging us, but it's still it's an important value to us. Be open, transparent, uh, kind of being being able to to share what you what you're thinking uh, without the politics. Being able to listen and learn, closely coupled to work uh, back from the customer. Because if you don't listen and learn, um, it's quite hard to work back from the customer because otherwise you're opinion based. Uh, take ownership, um, being proactive and build on each other. It's also very important values, which shows that we are valuing teamwork. Uh, but also allow for people really driving things. Um, we are I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, we are b believing in empowerment and enablement. Um, and uh, that also means that you are actually being able to do something and bring something to the street uh, at, at Olix. How to get there, kind of, we're mainly on the product and tech side working in packs. Um, and we have, uh, we have a few tech hubs, actually. One is Berlin, as I said, with 300 people. We also have a tech hub in, in Poznan, uh, one in Lisbon, um, and one in India, in, in Delhi, actually, in Gorgoran. Um, and here we are believing, according to our values, in autonomous teams that are able to ideate, design, develop, and operate a product by itself. Um, that means also that we need to trust packs that they do the right thing. Um, to a, with a certain degree of freedom, kind of what they build, um, how they work. So we're not telling you, hey, you need to work in Scrum or you need to work in Kanban. That's the decision of the team, uh, same as the technology they choose. Uh, obviously, with a certain limitation, we have a tech radar, as, as many companies also do. And you'll also see in a bit kind of what that means. Uh, and then obviously, kind of with great power comes great responsibility. So more or less like these teams are also then um, accountable for what they do. Um, but we use also OKRs to actually help these teams to guide their priorities uh, in their daily business. Tech stack, uh, I'm not going through all of them, but more or less like we have Google, Kotlin, PHP uh, for backend, uh, and, uh, Redux, uh, JavaScript for, 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 for front end, um, Swift and Kotlin for, for mobile native, uh, MySQL, Redis and so on for databases and uh, New Relic serverless uh, for infrastructure. Um, 
where recently kind of did a, well, not recently, it's a few years ago now, kind of shifted to AWS everywhere, um, was obviously also a challenge, um, but also a huge learning curve for all the teams. Talking a little bit about challenges. Um, and uh, if companies tell you it's almost like everything is just uh, pretty and new, most of them, but most of the time it's not true. And we also have uh, challenges when it comes to, from to a tech perspective. Um, we are also in, we have, we have a, quite a few platforms, and we have one important one in Europe. It's still largely a monolith um, based on PHP. Um, so with a relatively complicated legacy-based architecture. But coming to the positive thing here, it's more or less like we know this, and kind of we're putting a big, big priority um, in decoupling uh, first, and then kind of uh, starting to extract services. Um, whereas the target setup is a microservices-based architecture with an API gateway that connects the mobile web, um, iOS, Android, and so on and so forth. Um, but again, kind of some challenges that result in tech debt, and most of you will know this, that the challenges are everywhere, um, from dealing with ambiguity, how to prioritize in the right way and not becoming frustrated um, when things do not work in the intended way, but also having helping others um, uh, when they have more troubles doing so. Um, basically, it requires uh, leadership, and that's also where I would love to to pivot um, on now. So that we are talking a little bit about leadership, and uh, uh, you've now seen some of the opportunities and challenges that we face at um, On the one hand, you have empowerment and enablement. On the other hand, there are restrictions due to technical uh, realities. And here we all know the games, and uh, it's always a risk to fall into a future factory. Um, here we would completely focus on the tech debt, and uh, in reality, there's always a trade-off between prioritizing this tech debt. And uh, Corona did not help here. Um, this is kind of a virus here, um, as um, suddenly the landscape and gear and priorities changed even more. Um, as many companies, including ourselves, who are focusing on person-to-person -person trade, which was suddenly not existing anymore because people are in lockdown or they're not allowed to do so, or they don't want to um, kind of operate uh, with each other, um, shifted to emergency mode. Um, and here in times of crisis, leadership is even more essential. Um, so let's explore this a little bit and what was easy and more complicated, and also kind of a little bit of my stand here. And uh, as my my personal leadership style, which hopefully helps you a little bit. And apologies for these emails, I closed it, but uh, for whatever reason, they're, they're picking up. So um, don't let yourself distract from it. Um, so basically, there are two types of leaders in times of crisis. Um, those are slightly or even more panicking, like, oh, the world comes be eaten alive by zombies or lose our jobs, which was actually quite a reality for many people, um, kind of uh, losing their jobs, going on furlough, um, and uh, the, was, was complicated. Uh, or let's do everything and uh, at the same time, or it's not worth doing anything as we're helpless anyway. Um, by the way, you see these same behaviors also outside of crisis, um, that uh, the world is not working to improve, and there will always be challenges. So things not going outside of um, according to plan, that COVID-19 made this behavior just a little bit more visible. And I'm quite sure that um, you have, have seen that in, in your own environment. Again, so big apologies. I don't know what this happens here. Uh, now, and it's also a <laughs> rookie mistake here. All right, I'm back. Um, kind of uh, they are seeing these things outside of your environment and kind of it's a great place to also learn, uh, kind of see this and see it how you don't want to do it. And then uh, there are these other leaders um, who lead the way out of the crisis. I think Angela Merkel, uh, you can say whatever you want to in terms of political stance, but she actually as a chancellor, she did a good job uh, during the crisis. She was quite calm, she's a scientist. Um, she was rational, factual. I believe the same thing, how we should do products. This is basically everybody has an opinion, but you should make decisions based on facts, figures, do your research, be it experimentation, IB testing, um, user testing, usability testing, or uh, analytics. And she did it on fact, same as a female leader of New Zealand, to name a few. Um, they stayed calm, uh, were good captains uh, on a ship uh, during a very rocky, rocky sea in time. And uh, that is also what good leaders do. 
um, they're calm, the most complicated times, they show focus, they care about you and the customers, um, are not ego-driven. Um, they ask, how are you and how can I help? They empower and enable. Um, values we strongly believe in at OLX um, and uh, we, where we are trying to empower um, and, and, and enable. And we are also looking consistently at leaders uh, doing the right thing. Doing the right thing might be completely relative. I'm, I'm aware of this, but uh, it's basically driven by these values I've already shared before. Um, we're looking for leaders that look at challenges as opportunities. Um, ultimately, COVID-19 is a huge crisis and I, you don't need to have another person talking about this. I think we are all more than aware about this, but what is needed are people that are actually able to deal with these crises and the more crises to come uh, in, in, in our lives. Um, being there for the, also for those who actually need a leader, uh, come up with new and innovative ways of looking into things. So I said a bit um, like not talk, not thinking about yourself, um, which is a slippery slope um, because uh, kind of there's something I call it the women trap. Uh, controversial. It's my my own uh, wording, so uh, uh, don't take it personal. But it's like. Look at this horror scenario, kind of there are issues at a plane, masks fall down. So who takes the mask first? Uh, you should, because in the worst case, you have eight seconds uh, before you become unconscious. And if you're unconscious, you cannot help anybody anymore. So take the mask first and then help the child next to you. Why I'm saying that it's um, taking the mask first doesn't make you selfish. Um, more people will survive. And that health, same holds true to a certain degree when it comes to personal development. You owe it to yourself, but also to the people around you. I see it often uh, with women that they are too altruistic. Uh, they get things done. Do not brag about it. Bragging is maybe also the wrong term because bragging is not a good thing anyway. But as a leader, you're a multiplicator. Uh, you lead people, you lead topics, you lead organizations. Um, think about yourself your beliefs and what you achieve and, and telling this makes you also hurt by others where basically you're leading the way, you're a role model. Um, so do not lead, let others eat your cake as you deserve it. And you also owe it to others because uh, then kind of other people otherwise see your behavior and, and they also kind of are not uh, visible and kind of talking about their successes. Leadership is ultimately a trait, but also skill. Uh, techniques can be learned like this one that I just said, kind of not being shy, um, also takes sometimes the credit. Um, there are obviously some more natural leaders with more natural instincts, but with more seniority often comes the realization that management is quite short-sighted. Um, I'm even kind of coming to the realization, like I'm, I'm a people manager, I have, a, I have a significant team, but I see myself as a people leader not as a people manager. People management aspects are performance reviews and uh, goal setting. But people leadership is the most important thing. Um, kind of great leaders can move the needle long term. They have a vision, they recognize, they do the best for many and also can influence um, others without form of power and can execute on that. However, this also requires you to be on the forefront of yourself, uh, finding out who you are, what you want, uh, reflection is key, often with the help of others, so good feedback culture uh, that is there to help you. Here also mentoring and coaching is, uh, are powerful tools actually, um, something that I realized a few years ago when I actually um, got myself uh, a coach and it was the most revealing uh, experience I have so far that actually even drove me to uh, the decision uh, I'm actually doing a coaching training myself uh, which I'm doing uh, at the side of my um, my regular job, um, hopefully to make it better for everyone. Um, and also here, kind of a little tip, if you're looking for a new position, um, do not let yourself tempt um, to, to only uh, be, be, be drawn in by salary and fancy titles. Um, by the way, fancy titles, I would call myself master of disaster. Titles do not mean anything. Responsibility does. And... Uh, that you're actually proud of what you're doing, that it's according to your values and correlates with that. Um, inquire about the culture, um, about attitudes towards leadership, um, if they're willing to invest into your growth, um, that you have a voice that is being heard. If you have all these covered, 
uh, career progression comes naturally. Um, if you are, however, trapped in a toxic culture, uh, that might be just as much, much, much harder to actually get out of the position that you're actually in. What I've also often seen is basically that women are held back or irritated um, as they think that what they see is kind of what I call the boys club, uh, is something that you need to comply to. Um, so imitating actually male behavior. And uh, let's be honest, uh, we are far from having diverse and inclusive environment, environments in, in most industries. I started my career in advertising, hugely male-driven, backdoor talking. I was mostly not invited on the table. Um, and uh, that was hard. Um, and that continues in most positions I've, um, I've held. Um, I'm quite a senior position, so now it becomes easier, but I also recognize this as a responsibility to make it easier for, for others. Um, so this will not automatically go away kind of with these uh, kind of because we are in male dominated industries um but you need to play learn to play the game and uh, not to take it personal um there's still a big gap in numbers between women and, and the men and, and higher positions and something we at least at olx we're trying to actually actively solve um through some initiatives and will come uh, to in a bit um I'm, for example, trying hard to hire also kind of female product managers. Uh, we're trying hard to find uh, female uh, engineers. Um, but it's not easy. The beginning of the funnel is already filled more by, by male as female. And I see it often that women simply don't apply because they think they, it needs to be perfect. They, they need to fit perfectly to the job description. It's not true. You don't need to. It's uh, it's okay to kind of to fit uh, to only a certain degree. It's, uh, but uh, we are um, also uh, hence started to actually being a little bit less uh, descriptive with job descriptions and being more flexible and showing that you don't need to have a hundred percent match. You'll never have that anyway. Uh, so also <laughs> kind of my my personal tip is be, be brave um, and kind of not not expect to, uh, you to fit a hundred percent in the job description in order to apply. And then there are and will be uh, still double standards when it comes to women and men. Um, when a man does things like an, uh, when a woman does things like like uh, uh, like a man does actively asking for for what she wants, she's aggressive. If she gives open feedback, she is too critical. Um, men doing the same are just doers uh, and get things done, not holding back. I hate it, but it's a reality. Um, I can only recommend that you all try to find your own style, both in leadership and ultimately who you want to be. Um, you do not need to imitate any male behavior. Find yourself role models and also important anti-role models. Um, and uh, I decided at some point to find my personal style. It's people-oriented, uh, transparent, non-political, non-bullshit. Um, I don't have a poker face, unfortunately, so kind of the non-bullshit comes in handy. Um, and uh, I'm still not shy to find my, my place in the world. And uh, I'm proud actually to say that we at Olix, we are uh, supporting new and aspiring female leaders um, as much as we can with many initiatives. I, for example, have 75% women in my team, um, which was harder to get to, but uh, it's, uh, I'm quite proud of this. And uh, But also kind of through investing a lot in, in mentoring, development, and career aspirations, listening to the team, listening to um, the people actually working at Olix. We also have a dedicated a diversity and inclusion team um, there that is not only supporting local teams. You might imagine like uh, India is very different from Ukraine or Portugal. So we, we need to have recognized the local flavors when it comes to DNI, but also global ones. We have a dedicated DNI roadmap, um, celebrating DNI Week, Women's Day. Um, to also kind of from originally from, from Google come, coming I am remarkable uh, rollout uh, recently. So now some tips, um, it's a few words, but I think it's, it's important to write them down. Um, so be prepared that it takes time. Um, kind of the, the leadership journey is an ongoing one because you also might change your leadership styles over time. I did most certainly. Uh, quite a lot. Um, I'm now believing very much in, um, in servant leadership, but I'm also kind of need to apply um, need to apply serve, uh, kind of sometimes situational leadership when it's applicable. Look for a mentor. 
in fact, look for several ones. They can mentor you on several things. Look for people that are different than you. Don't look for the same thing because that is also what, not what you want to hire for. As I said before, identify role models and also the non-role models. Um, invest in a coach. And again, for me, it did really, really the trick. Um, and uh, whereas trainings will not do it. Uh, learn by doing. Uh, shadow people. Shadowing is also powerful. Uh, if you have people you're looking up to and you can learning by doing is, is like the most important thing and arrange for constant feedback. Feedback is a good thing. Um, I'm personally not getting enough feedback um, and I want to get better. So it's like I'm actively asking everybody to kind of give me feedback. Uh, even sometimes hard because everybody is a little bit allergic to criticism, uh, but it is important. Um, be resilient. The world is still a grim place in many, many instances. So sometimes it requires a thick skin. Don't take it personal. Uh, and that's not easy. Kind of for me, it took maybe 10 years of uh, my professional life. I'm now 15 years in my professional life. So you can imagine how long <laughs> it's uh, two thirds of it uh, to actually get there that I don't take it personal um, and I don't make it personal. Um, same as uh, learning to fail. Um, and again, don't, don't bang yourself up on it. If you're taking risks, then you will fail. And that's okay. Um, fail, learn out of it, as same as you would do with a product and kind of with an MVP or with experimentation. That's completely fine. I already talked about uh, feedback. Have a development plan in place. And I know that development plans are sometimes a little bit connotated when you're there, these kind of uh, personal improvement plans that com some companies have. And when you're on these, these, these plans and you're basically on, on a risk of being managed out, uh, then that's not good actually. I think you need to have development plans in order to get better, um, even if you're already good. Um, and everybody should have one. It's more or less like knowing where, uh, what, uh, what I'm striving for. So kind of what is the result of my reflection. Um, what do I want to do? What do I want to achieve? Uh, and then kind of knowing what are the gaps between it. So asking for constant feedback and then working um, actively on it with an action plan. So it's always good. Um, do a read me. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't know the concept, maybe look it up. Um, it's sometimes pe people will, cannot look in your head. So it's uh, sometimes you need to give people also kind of an idea of who you are. And the read me with a, with a video reflection, not a marketing read me, will help others to, to, to understand you better and give you, give you not good feedback. Um, and uh, stop being too humble. Sometimes take the pat on the back and let's uh, be proud of what you do. Um, and also ask what you want. If you know what you want, ask for it. Don't be shy. And last but not least, build your personal brand of the leader you want to be. And then live to it. It doesn't help if you don't have it. Uh, don't live it every day. Have a, have a vision, have values, know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. Reflect constantly and then live it. Um, and uh, that's, uh, yeah, a little bit, I look at people a little bit like products. Uh, so basically you need to do your research, then you need to have the requirements in place. You have to need to have to test it out, have an executional roadmap, um, and then get from, from there. So um, that's uh, hopefully gave you a little bit of an idea um, of who we are at Olix, how we do things, um, but also kind of what the values are we are thriving for. Um, and uh, if you're interested in some of the, the openings, Anna already told it, there's also kind of a dedicated area around Olix uh, where uh, talent acquisition can give you a little bit more uh, concrete um, kind of role descriptions, but you can also reach out to me. Uh, I just have here my, my, my LinkedIn profile, but there are also other ways of reaching me. I'm active on uh, Twitter if you're interested in my food behavior, uh, you kind of also <laughs> can look me up at Instagram. Um, quite an active foodie so um and uh, i would uh, kind of stop uh, sharing now and kind of look at the questions uh, that you might have hi florian that was great thank you very much i especially love the tips that you shared i wanted to highlight one but i think all of them are so important one of our participants is asking like how do you stop being too humble how did you learn that <laughs> oh, are you still learning that that's the question because i am still learning that 
Yeah, I think it's a it's a thin line, right? Kind of this whole thing, bragging uh, and and being too humble. Uh, look at a concept like yin yang. Yeah. Um, more or less, it's, and you need to find the right balance. Um, but you also need to be okay, kind of, and just saying, "Hey, I did a good job." Exactly. Uh, and uh, but it's it's something I'm constantly learning this. So today I have, for example, my introvert day, um, and uh, today it would be super hard for me to to not being super humble. Um, but in other days it's easier. But uh, start with actually really acknowledging that when you did a good job, that you actually acknowledge it and, and take it everywhere. Right. From the start. Start, start acknowledging that you did a good job, right? Yes. Yes. So everyone who is listening to us, stop being too humble by acknowledging that. People are sharing that these are great tips. Thanks, Lorian. I can so much relate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, session was really awesome. Great. Um, maybe another question also from me personally. What do you personally love about working at Orlex? Mm. One thing is basically it's people. We are in software development, uh, so it's all around people. We are not building cars. We are not building uh, planes. If it's software development. And if we are not, if the people are not happy, we will fail, right? And uh, I really like this. I like the, the atmosphere, I like the people. I like the diversity of people. Um, so I kind of, uh, um, I had a team for a longer time in India and uh, also have teams in in, in, in Ukraine and, and, and in Poznan and all of them are different and uh, they love what they do. And that's that's nice. It's actually really nice. If you're, right. we're not mercenaries, right? We're working, obviously money is important, it's hygiene. Um, but ultimately, kind of, we're, we're, we're in, believe in. Right. and I love this. Uh, and another aspect is basically kind of that I'm allowed to um, to get things done uh, without much politics. <laughs> That's great, a very important point. Uh, Mariana is asking, can I have an opportunity here in Germany with B2 level? In German, probably. Uh, B2 is kind of it's a language uh, proficiency language or? Language proficiency, exactly. As, as oh. far as I understand, Mariana Bernardes, she's probably yeah. a native speaker. We, we almost have, we, we don't have many Germans in the Berlin half, funnily. Um, I think we have 10% maybe. Um, most of them, people come in, in, in the Berlin half, they're coming from, from Argentina, from, from India, uh, from uh, from, from Portugal, so don't uh, worry. you know, B2 is good enough and try and apply. Yeah, it's like there it are so many people who are not native speakers. This is really great. I, I don't speak German at, at work or, 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 or language is English. Yeah. So, well, English is the main language. So just feel free yeah. to apply. Olex is an international company and yeah, try it. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Florian. Great insights. How did you achieve to have 75% of women on your team? It's amazing. <laughs> the people are great. <laughs> so how did you manage to achieve that? Oh, part of it was maybe luck. Um, no, it's uh, kind of, I focused very much and kind of really investing into the, getting the job descriptions right. Uh, kind of, uh, we're, we're sending each job description to a checker. Um, because sometimes you're applying too much male uh, language and then it's not appealing to, to sometimes women. So we're trying to be, be do that. I have quite a vast uh, network also. <laughs> that also helps kind of a uh, few people I'm working now with. I've also worked with before uh, at other companies. Um, but then it's also multiplicators, all the women that I've hired. Working for Oilex, right? Because you shared why you love working there, so well, that that's yeah. you know that's all, always uh, it always works. Like once you share yes. the passion, people are like, well, you sound like it's a great place to work, and I want to figure out why. Right? Can I try? It? How can I get there? Uh, Michaela is asking, does Olex um, has offices in America? In in the US, no. Um, we, we had a had a let go presence, so let go is, is, is uh, like mobile first mm -hmm. classifieds, but uh, this joined forces with offer, offer up recently. Um, we have uh, an, we have offices in Latin America, uh, in Buenos Aires. Uh, we have one, but in also in other other countries um, that we have. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, do you have any tips on finding a mentor? On 
let me think about this. <laughs> uh, they're actually uh, mentoring uh, uh, programs, actually. The Mentor Club, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I, I cannot give you something completely concrete, but maybe uh, so the Mentor Club is one thing I know, basically, where they're mentors um, and uh, looking for mentees. And there are also others of those programs. So maybe you just actively look for those. All right, that's great. Um, check in also now for more questions. Since so many people are thanking you for your great tips and a very great and insightful presentation. That's really great. And check in, check in, check in. Well, here um, one person is asking, does OLX support, in actually several people asking, does OLX support internships? Uh, do you have student internships? Do you offer? For uh, we do, actually. We do in India. Um, we do in Poznan. We don't have an internship program yet in, in Berlin, but it's something um, I'm actually quite writing down as we speak because it's a good idea to actually look into that. Right. Are there, are there also remote internships? Do you know the remote internships? Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult question during these times because yeah. um, I, I, I've not been to the office uh, since three months. Um, you're, you're basically in my living room. Yeah. Um, but uh, we are we decided as a company that we believe in people to people interaction also on a company level so we will not go into a remote mode um also trying to avoid it so mm -hmm. at least fully remote obviously kind of the work from home options but um yeah but we haven't figured our uh, out yet of course COVID changed a lot also yeah i think i think that's that's a challenge that many companies have like yeah. right now you are still learning so many things and trying trying out if it works or if it doesn't work so this is really challenging here is a yeah. question from vanishta she is asking how do you sell yourself in the competition for a job position if you don't tick all the requirements for example um for a software developer position i might not have all the technologies required I, I might not have working experience in this, but I'm willing to learn. I I will not I like I will not be enough during this interview process. Uh, if it will if it is in the job requirement, they're expected it as a work experience. How to turn that in our favor during the selection process? And what can we do? Hmm. Excellent question, by the way. Um, first of all, never sell yourself. Um, kind of. Uh, I would actually not like to do interviews anymore, but more or less like these are two-way conversations mm -hmm. because you also need to see if you like the company, if you like what, right. the, the, the products, right? So don't sell yourself, uh, be yourself, um, but right. also know kind of what your what your strengths and weaknesses are and kind of be transparent about it. Um, you will never match a job description 100%. And I think you, you, you have brought it on. Willingness to learn, attitude, that's important. Um, we, we introduced... Uh, so I started with payments on Olix and kind of we decided to go with Kotlin. At this point in time, it was before Google selected Kotlin as a, as a language. So it was not many, many engineers could do it, but we looked for people willing to learn it and then also have others to learn it. So attitude is important. And if you have somebody who is not willing to help you with learning, then you might not be at the right company. All right. Be yourself and try, apply and have a willingness to learn. I, 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 I totally 100% agree on what you're saying, and that's how I also do hire for attitude, not for the work experience. And like, that's not everything. And you need to have, you don't actually need to meet to match all the requirements because no. you need to grow, right? If you already apply for what you know, how you will grow, right? You will be like stuck in the same position. So you need to have that kind of a challenge a bit. So that was great. Thank you very much. And let's maybe take one more question. So I see some questions are just being repeated. I just want to check. Um, okay. Does OLX have any requirement for software developers for mobile platform? That's a very narrow, I'll probably do. Mentors Minty platform. Um, no, no. People asking about mentorship. Don't sell yourself, don't sell yourself, be yourself, love it. Checking, checking, checking. I have a problem with cover letters. As a coder, I'm not very good at writing letters. What is your suggestion for this? That's my personal opinion. That's not as, as representative of OLX. I think cover letters are old school. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is, 
CV is CV matters because it actually shows a little bit what what you are and what you've learned. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm I'm personally not interested in cover letters. And when when you're when you're an engineer, it's also more important that uh, the way how you approach things and uh, how you do things and uh, kind of what you're right. good at, and not the cover letter. So just yeah, cover letter for telling. Or what to do? What what would you advise? So like, like an engineer wants to apply to work at Orlix, uh, just send your CV to a hiring specialist and that's it. And keep yes. up. And hopefully TA doesn't kill me now because uh, <laughs> I, I don't think we have the requirement for uh, for a cover letter. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so. I mean, I see a point. The point is like you have the experience. It's like you are not, as an engineer, you're not expect to write a very impressive letters because you need to be good in your field which is engineering itself so if if your CV speaks for like maybe prepare some practical examples that would um, help you uh, convince the hiring specialist that you are a good fit for this job exactly and, and then when entering the, the interview process and I'm interviewing a lot um, what impresses me the most is more or less like when I'm talking to somebody who actually knows what we are talking about actually kind of also the research who actually actively kind of looked at the requirements kind of in terms of these are these are the opportunities that i have here and kind of this is what i can bring to the table in order to to, to help you uh, with your agenda and right. kind of that you're being prepared i think that is that is more much more important because it shows also value and that you actually invested all right okay that was great thank you very much Florian, for this very useful and practical tips i loved a lot especially your point be yourself so everyone be yourself and try and apply we also have oilx booth so check it out and florian how people can get in touch with you linkedin maybe you can yeah. drop your linkedin profile in the chat or i can do that so people can get in touch with you and yeah continue asking your question i, I probably i think that many people would love to have you as a mentor thank you very much <laughs> and have a great day thanks for joining us yeah and uh thank you for for having me actually it was Absolutely. was a pleasure and uh thank you that you're organizing this uh, this uh, uh, here because i think it's super super important um what you're doing um this exchange so thank you thank you thank for doing you very that. much Florian. thank you for your kind words bye bye bye